Is this another Yellowstone supervolcano? Well, it's as powerful and it's melting the ice beneath Antarctica. Recently, geologists have found a hundred volcanoes, most of them located on the western coast of Antarctica. Uh, near the, here it is, as you can see that ridge on the west. And uh, that's the area that is also happens to be melting and also the area that has the deepest trench, which is deeper than the Grand Canyon. And let's also remember the Grand Canyon is not far from Yellowstone anyway. But it's also an area we have, we have all this ice melt and environmentalists are very concerned because of the fact that if this ice, which is 90% of the Earth's fresh water, enters the ocean, that means that the currents will change, the, air, the water currents, the air currents will change, and that means that our climate will change. If we don't have the air conditioning of the Antarctic, we will not be, live, be able to live in a hot climate that we would be getting. So now this thing, this range of mountains, these ranges of volcanoes could be connected, could be a supervolcano. They're still learning more every month, every year. They recently came out with a confirmation that one of the volcanoes, there is a new volcano, meaning that it has a deformation, it's rising above the ice shelf, Snow is, uh, because of the fact that some areas don't get too much snow, uh, the peak is uh, raw earth, and uh, it's uh, melting everything around it. Now, these uh, series of gigantic volcanoes could be as powerful and as dangerous as Yellowstone in Wyoming. It's melting the Antarctic ice, from beneath the surface and this ice is getting lubricated by the melt of the water and is moving. NASA scientists have revealed this. They've taken readings from their aerial readings with uh, infrared uh, cameras and uh, experts are working at the South Pole finding evidence to support the theory that there is a huge geothermal heat source under the surface and they believe it could be as dangerous as Yellowstone supervolcano. Scientists had the theory that the ice was melting due to volcanic thermal activity because they noticed a breathing effect was visible on Antarctica's Mary Bird Land which is on the west and the volcano itself is not a new discovery, but the research suggests that it could be helping along global warming and could be why the ice sheets are collapsing and why they're now, that is, and why they collapsed about 11,000 years ago in a previous example of climate change. Well, okay, 11 to 12,000 years ago, some people, for example, Graham Hancock believes that we had a very huge uh, earth-shattering event in that we had a, uh, an asteroid impact that also caused seismic and volcanic activities that changed the climate on the earth, that created havoc, even pole shifts, certain species, extinctions, and uh, all, all this. Um, now, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Helene Cerussi claims, uh, she says that uh, the uh, theory was crazy. She says, I didn't see how we could have that amount of heat and still have the ice on top of this heat. Cerussi of the JPL used ice sheet model ISSM. It's a mathematical model used by uh, physicists of the ice sheet, sheet to see the ice sheets to look for heat sources and where these melt water deposits are. And they create streams. Uh, when they melt, they, they create streams that, uh, of course, change the temperature of the water nearby. 
the melted water beneath the surface lubricates the ice sheets and allows the glaciers to slide. It's like when you have an ice cube on your kitchen countertop and underneath the ice as it melts, it lubricates and the ice and the ice cube starts moving very, very easily. It's the same thing. Now the information can also be used to estimate how much ice will be lost in the future, she says. The underwater systems in Antarctica can cause surface ice to rise by at least six meters over a short time, allowing scientists to observe the water sources beneath the surface. NASA said they found that the flux of energy from the mantle plume must be, listen to this, more than 150 milliwatts per square meter. What do we have in Yellowstone? Well, the readings there, under Yellowstone National Park, they say that the heat from below is about 200 milliwatts per square meter, averaging over the entire park. So you see that the 150 found on the west coast of Antarctica is almost as much as the supervolcano's heat of 200 milliwatts. Now, for comparison, in U.S. regions with no volcanic activity, the heat flux from Earth's mantle is 40 to 60 milliwatts. So you can see how hot it is on the west side here in Antarctica, which means that this is probably what is causing the ice melt and not global warming. Or maybe global warming is just a fraction of the ice melt, let's put it that way. But uh, there are things that are always being discovered in Antarctica, and they're excited, the scientists are very excited that they have found that the, geog the geology is uh, overwhelming. And of course, they can't see most of them because they're covered with ice. They're covered with snow. They're under the ice. But these are the ones, some of the names of the uh, volcanoes in Antarctica. Mount Erebus, we can see that smoking sometimes. That's 3,794 meters in height. Then they have Deception Island, which is 576 meters in height. The Pleiades, which are 3,040 meters in height. Mount Seipel, which is 3,110 meters in height. Bridgman Island, Mount Morning, which is 2,725 meters height. Tony Mountain, which is almost as high as Mount Erebus, it's 3,595 meters in height. Then Mount Takahe, which also smike, uh, smokes a lot, uh, meaning that uh, it has gas, gas emissions. Uh, 3,460 meters. Mount Melbourne, 2,000. 732, Mount Sidley, 4,285, that smokes as well. And uh, in one of my previous Antarctica videos today, we were talking about that. That's around the area that the new volcano has been found. And the geologists are very excited about it because they believe that uh, it's deforming very quickly and it could, of course, they, they were asked if there, it could erupt and they said, of course it could erupt. Now, Mount Berlin is 3,478 meters. Then you have Peter Island, which the whole island is a volcano. Mount Weish, which is 3,292 meters in height. Mount Terror, 3,230 meters. Mount Hampton is 3,323. Mount Moulton is 3,078 meters. Mount Bird is 1,765 meters. Mount Murphy is 2,000 705 meters. Uh, Mount Haddington is 1,630. Mount Overlord, 3,395. Mount Frakes is 3,675. Mount Steer, 3,358. And we have a couple of more before you finish. Mount Andrus, 2,978 meters. Ghostburg is uh, 370, it looks a little bit like a pyramid. Mount Discovery is 2,681, and Lars Christensen is 1,755. That's just some of them. And as we said before, there's a lot of them that are covered by the ice sheets. 
And I was referring to the article by Sean Martin on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.